Hello everyone, so today we are going to talk about the arrays of uh, C programming like uh, introduction as well as the example also. So first of all the introduction to arrays. An array is a collection of data that holds fixed number of values but of the same time. Okay. Uh, an array is a variable that can store multiple values like 5 values, uh, 10 values, uh, etc. Uh, example, if you want to store 100 integers, okay, you can create an array for it rather than creating 100 variables, okay. So, types of an array is, uh, we can have a single dimensional array and uh, we can have what multi-dimensional array, okay. So, first thing is how to declare an array in C programming. So, to declare an array in C programming, a programmer specifies the type of elements and the number of elements required by an array as follow. That means you have to write your data type. It can be integer, it can be float, it can be character, it can be any data type. Then you have to give any array name like, like for example I can write A also and uh, suppose if it is some meaningful program okay you are asking for marks or something then your array name will be marks something like that okay and then in the square bracket you have to write array size that means you want uh, how many elements or how many numbers etc. So here you all can see here we have declared an array the name of that array is mark and it is of which data type floating floating point or you can say that float and the size will be what five it means it can hold five floating point values if you are writing 50 it means it can hold 50 floating point values okay so next thing is how to initialize an array that is also very important so it is possible to initialize an array during declaration only Okay, in previous slide it was like how to declare. So here uh, it is initialization. So at the time of declaration also you can initialize an array. Okay, so you can initialize an array in C programming either one by one that is uh, one method you can say or using a single statement that means something like this which is in the red color. We have a data type integer, uh, name of the array is mark and the size of that array is 5 and then we are not writing semicolon because it is not only declaration. In the same line we are initializing also. So after that it will be equal to sign and as you all can see here it can hold only 5 integer data type values. Okay, so we are uh, also uh, initializing five different values in the curly bracket. So 19, 10, 8, 17 and 9 and then close of curly bracket and then what semicolon. The number of values between the brackets, curly brackets cannot be larger than the number of elements that we declare for the array between what square bracket. If you are writing here uh, uh, number 5, okay, here you are writing. But here at the time of initializing, if you are writing 10 different values, so it is not possible. See here, there is one more example. We are writing integer, we are writing mark, but inside the square bracket, we are not writing any value. Okay, after that equal to sign and curly bracket and uh, like uh, we have entered some number 19, 10, 8, 17 and 9 and then close of curly bracket and semicolon. So here we have not specified the size. However, the compiler knows its size is what 5 as we are initial initializing it with how many elements? 5 elements. So this is also one of the way to initialize. Okay, so next thing is how to access array elements. Okay, so you can access the array elements of an array by what indices? Index. Okay, suppose you declare an array mark. Okay, as above. That means here you all can see we have a five values as above means your previous slide something like this. Okay, uh, it indicates your first value 
is at index number 0. So here remember always one thing. Array always start with the index number 0. Always. Okay. So here we have one number and for that index is what 0. Then next number index will be what 1. Next index will be 2. Next index will be 3. Next index will be 4. So it is till index number 4. But total how many values are there? 5. <coughs> See here. The first element is mark of 0. While speaking, okay, while speaking, we speak in that way actually. It is a mark of 0. Then uh, second element is mark of 1 and so on. So here it is like mark of 0 is actually equal to 19. Then mark of 1 is equal to 10. Mark of 2 is equal to 8. Mark of 3 is equal to 17. Mark of 4 is equal to what? 9. So this is how you can access your array elements. So few key points or key notes actually. So arrays have 0 as I said as a first index always not 1. So in the given example also, mark of 0 is the first element. Then second point, if the size of an array is n, so to access the last element, it will be always n minus 1 because your index always starts from 0. That's why in our example also it is mark of 4, not 5 actually. Suppose the starting address for mark of 0, address means memory address. Suppose the starting memory address for mark of 0 is, is 2120D. Then the address of mark of 1 will be 2122D. Similarly, address of mark 2 will be 2124D and so on. This is because size of integer is 2 bytes. So here you all can see it was 20, then 22 and then 24 and so on because we have used data type as integer and size of integer is what 2 bytes. So here we have one simple program just for understanding purpose that how you can take array as an input and how to display the same thing in your output screen. Okay, simple example. So first of all, obviously, this is the header file that is hash include stdr.h and then we write our program uh, inside the void main function always. Okay. Uh, then next thing is integer and then name of the array variable which is values and the size is what? Fine. Then normal variable integer i and semicolon. Then one uh, normal statement printf that enter phi integer. So this message will come as it is on our output screen on the right hand side. You all can see this thing. Okay. Then double slash indicates comments. Okay. Now the main thing is if it is single dimensional array or uh, uh, two dimensional array always or it is mandatory. Okay. To use for loop or any loop actually if you are using what array concept in your program because array accept not the single value it accept multiple values so we require at least any one loop and obviously what i will suggest is the easiest one is the for loop okay so here you all can see for i equal to 0 because it will start from 0 so it is still 4 total 5 elements that's why it is less than 5 not less than equal to no it is less than 5 then i plus plus and scanf as we know c programming it takes user input whatever we are entering okay so scanf and person d because it is an integer data type and m percent and then our array variable name which is values of now we are not writing values of 0 because otherwise what will happen this loop will run total 5 times but it will be every time values of 0 which we don't want we want values of 0 and 1 value values of 1 and 1 value values of 2 and 1 value so therefore we are writing values of i because we know that i will start from 0 
that is the first time then second time i plus plus and i becomes one next time i plus plus i becomes two and so on and this way we can easily store all the values in an array variable and then coming to the one more part as we are done with the uh, taking input and storing it in an array now it's time to display so while taking also we required for loop compulsory and while displaying also we required for loop because we have to print multiple values not the one value so printf displaying what integers okay so we have a for loop like i equal to 0 i less than 5 i plus plus open the bracket printf and we are printing that is values of now again the same thing we are not writing uh, values of 0 what exactly we are writing is values of i because we are interested in printing values of 0 or uska value values of 1 and that value values of 2 and that value and because of that we are writing values of i so this again this for loop will run 5 times okay and then our voidman function closing bracket and on the right hand side you all can see the output which we are getting so remember one thing if it is array then loop is the compulsory okay next thing is like again now we will not go that much in detail okay uh, this is like using array you can calculate the average so first we will start from the output side then it is easy to write uh, like any program uh, enter number of elements so we are asking user how many elements you want to enter so this is that part actually so user will say for example five so obviously after that we are going to ask user that enter first number enter second number enter third number enter fourth number enter fifth number and likewise and obviously when you are going to execute that time you will get to know it will be 5 it will be 10 it will be 7 it will be 3 so when you are using for loop in your program do not write i less than 5 because we don't know what user will enter for the first line that is i am talking about this one enter the number of elements user can enter 15 user can enter 3 4 5 6 7 any number so it is totally based on which variable n because whatever you are entering we are storing in which variable n so this for loop will take five elements and at the same time at the same time that means when you are entering first element let's say 45 so here there is one line in the red color section inside the for loop actually sum plus equal to so first of all this indicates sum equal to sum plus in detail if we if we talk about and what is the initial value of sum which we have given it is zero so this indicates sum equal to sum plus marks of i so zero plus what is the first value 45 so what is the latest value of variable sum it will be 45 and then it will increment i by what one so next time you will enter your second number okay now you are entering 35 so again what is the meaning of this red color line sum equal to sum plus so what is the latest value of sum it is 45 plus what you have entered now 35 so what is 45 plus 35 it will be 8080 and likewise it will keep on adding and then outside the for loop once you are done with the final value of sum we are calculating average so average will be equal to sum divided by number of elements and we have stored our number of elements in which variable n and then we are printing that's it so that is also one of the simple program using the concept of what array now the question is x is the elements out of its bound okay suppose you declare an array of 10 elements let's say integer and whatever name you want to give test array or whatever and 10 
so you can access the array elements from test array of 0 to test array of what 9 now let's say if you try to access test of array which is uh, 12 the element is not available this may cause unexpected output or you can say that undefined behavior sometimes you might get an error or some other time your uh, program may run correctly hence you should never access the elements of an array outside of its what bound the next thing is all about uh, multi-dimensional array okay so in c programming you can create an array of arrays and it is called as multi-dimensional so when i say multi-dimensional word it means two-dimensional three-dimensional four-dimensional it can be anything so now obviously we know of like this is data type this is the name of the variable and first square bracket we know because of the uh, one dimensional array but here total how many brackets are that two one is having value three and one is having value what four so here x is the two dimensional array that is the first thing and the array array can hold how many elements 12 elements you can think that array as a table with the three rows and uh, each row is having what four columns so first value always indicates number of rows and second value indicates number of what columns so here on right hand side also i have one diagram so total how many rows are there one two and three and total how many columns one two three and what four so to access this element, so it is at which row number and it is at which column, but, but do not consider 1, 2, 3, 4 naming. As I said, array index always start from 0. So this is your row number 0, row number 1 and row number 2. So this element is in row 1 and column 2 because this is 0 this is 1 this is 2 and this is what 3 okay yeah so next thing is how to initialize uh, multi-dimensional array so different ways obviously again here also uh, you can initialize the two-dimensional array so integer c as i said row and uh, uh, column so two rows and each row is having three columns so this is my first this part actually yeah this is my first row having three columns or three values second row or three values suppose if you are not defining row and if you are defining only column still it is fine this will be first row and this will be what second row and if you are writing something like this two and three properly but on right hand side you are writing straightforward six numbers no curly brackets also more then in that case first three numbers are first row and next three numbers are what second row so these are the different ways you can initialize two dimensional array and here is the simple program based on this uh, two dimensional array where again it is like a one dimensional only we are asking and we are displaying but when it was single dimensional or one dimensional it was like only one form now when it comes to two dimensional we require two for loop because it is in the form of two dimension not the one dimension okay so uh, in the red color section we have declared our array name that is a with this uh, two rows and two columns so you all can see here two for loops for user input for taking the user input and here also with the array variable two square bracket one is i and one is what j so this part is totally for taking user input okay and total four values okay and then again the same part okay but instead of scanf like previous we are taking input here we are displaying so we are using what printf so again here for two dimensional two for loop is compulsory for taking user input and two for loop compulsory for displaying the output so these are obviously some basic levels of programs you can say but here is the uh, full concept of arrays or one dimensional and two dimensional. Thank you everyone.